Hello, Boktov. Um, well, here I am at a friend's house. Um, I'm gonna be making plenty of videos today. I am no longer in the summer school, like with my job as well. I'll give you an update about that very soon. But um, most importantly, I finished the Foundation Trilogy. So I'm just gonna go bit by bit with what I remember. I, I did write some notes at the end of every um, section. So I'll try to sort of like guide you through my thoughts in different videos. This is part one of Foundation and Empire and it's the general. And uh, basically the general is Bel Rios, which is the general of the empire who um, hears about uh, some magicians that have the uh, ability to contain nuclear power in a space the size of like a um, fingernail. Um, <clears throat> And, and although this is supposed to be rumors and everything, he's basically referring to the scientists of the foundation. The foundation is the most advanced, uh, have the most advanced technology in the galaxy, although they are not as big as the Empire yet. Um, but um, this general from of the Empire, um, um, at the service of uh, Cleon the Second, Cleon the Second, is. Um, is, is not only a strong general, but also he wants to restore the glory of the empire and make a reputation for himself as well. Uh, so he requests to the em emperor um, sort of like forces in order to conquer the foundation to find these magicians, uh, which he eventually does and attacks the foundation in order to to obtain this magic and, and, and also protect the empire from the potential harm that um, that such a force would uh, cause on the on the on the on the empire to to Cleon II and 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 to Trantor and everything. So the first thing I notice is that um, by now I am already starting to realize that um, the character development is definitely not um, Asimov's strength. I can understand that per perhaps. Uh, the reason why he doesn't develop the characters is because of his main thesis of sort of like psycho history, how sort of like the individual doesn't matter, what you personally do doesn't matter. It is sort of like the grand narrative that moves history forward. And even if you were the general that was gonna sort of like start this war, this war was not gonna happen anyways because it has been sort of like in gestation, sort of like being prepared by centuries and, and, and there is a myriad of actions that takes us there. Um, which means that because the individual doesn't matter, the individual characters also don't matter. And uh, so this is definitely not a character's um, novel. Um, another thing that I find interesting is uh, so sort of like this idea of referring to the scientists as magicians. Because I think that uh, this is something that we over often overlook but uh, science is our greatest source of uh, superstition nowadays, uh, precisely because we don't understand the scientific um, products and uh, and uh, accessories that populate our lives. So we 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 mystify them, and uh, and I feel like in this sense, sort of like this part of the book and this book as a whole feels a little bit like a critique of scientism, scientificism, I don't really know how you pronounce that in English, scientificism, sort of like the belief that everything can be solved by science, that science is sort of like our own uh, God, once God is uh, dead, um, with the, since the illustration sort of like we had to find something else, this is like sort of uh, Adorno's dialectics, it's uh, it's much of uh, the philosophy that came after the 17th, uh, 18th century. Um, um, but yeah, it's sort of like the, the um, once the divine falls because of science, because of the discoveries that human does, that sort of like dethrone uh, not only the divine but human, the human itself, humanism comes back uh, by the hand of science, of rationality, of certain values that are, although a priori might seem like they are sort of like freeing us from that mysticism, from that superstition, they become just another form of superstition. And uh, and uh, and science to most people is just magic. And, and people like 
Elon Musk to, to some of these uh, scientists. Uh, I used to work with one of these people in, when I was a chef in, in London. And uh, he, for him, Elon Musk was very much a prophet. Was very, very much his own messiah that was going to save the earth and take them to the promised land in Mars. Um, more of this in the future, perhaps I'll, at some point I'll reread um, um, Husserl's Critique of Psychology and I, I'll, I'll also expand on this when I read a bit more Adorno. But, uh, but yeah, I think you get what I mean uh, so far. So then, um, on the other hand, psychohistory, as it was um, very predictable that it was going to happen, leads to a very specific kind of conformism from the side of the foundation because they know that um, everything is sort of like being planned by seldom so they don't need to do anything and uh, and some of like the seldom's uh, rules like for example a strong general uh, and a strong emperor will uh, cancel each other because the strong emperor will get rid of a strong general in order and the strong general will look outward and the strong emperor will get rid of the uh, strong general uh, in order to assert its force, uh, his force, which is exactly what it happens. You know, like um, Rios goes to the foundation, he gets given the army, he's winning because he has uh, like an incredible, uh, num like numeric uh, advantage, and uh, all of that leads to. Uh, uh, Cleon becoming insecure about the power that Rios is about to, to gain, the general, so he calls him back and then executes him, and the foundation has won again. So it's a bit of an anti-climax. I'm not a huge um, fan of, of, of the ending of this arch, but what's coming is kind of a, like Asimov himself realizing of this weakness um, on the next section that I will make in a different video. But um, yeah, um, other than that, uh, I also feel like there are certain ellipses, uh, I don't know if that's the way you say it in, in English either, but um, yeah, like, yes, certain like jumps in time or like um, the book sometimes presents the action without really contextualizing it. You can see that sort of like Asimov was um, great in his vision, but um, as a writer, at least here, he wasn't fully, um, fully... Mature, or at least uh, he has he he had he. I I just can see many moments where not many, but like enough for me to notice uh, where where he sort of like forgets to set the action, and sort of like everything is suddenly happening without you really knowing. And I don't think it's something intentional in order to sort of like create some sense of disorientation on the reader or anything like that. I think that is generally just him uh, forgetting to do that, um, which is something that you know as a writer I can happens to me as well. Um, but that also shows the lack of um, revision that uh, this specific um, first half of the book um, has had. Um, lack of revision, obviously, uh, I'm not saying that this is a bad book or that it hasn't been revised at all. I'm just saying that uh, there are certain uh, moments where it feels like he overlooked uh, the way he was presenting the action in, in, in certain parts, like I think it's one is when they're generally sort of like fighting, uh, uh, like there's like a war on, on a spaceship or something like that, and uh, we just appear there, we jump from like a completely different kind of uh, um, circumstance to that, and there's no uh, explanation at all of how we got there, no preparation for, no, I, I can't remember now, but if you if you're reading this book with me or if you have read you would probably know what I mean so that is the general part one of um, foundation and empire I'll do uh, the next part will be the mule and it will uh, I will talk about the whole of the mule arcs, ar arts from from the second half of uh, foundation and empire to the first half of the second foundation or perhaps I'll talk about the rest of the book altogether because I wasn't really um in love with the arcadia arch uh yeah that's all um have a nice day